Brandon Morrison. Dazzling high in the slot. Now back at the right point. Daniel Henry. Daniel again. Centering Morrison scores. Well, today is a very special edition of NCIX Tech Tips. We are going to be looking at a media center PC. What is it? What is it for? How can it let you enjoy your TV on your computer? So when we opened up, you noticed I was watching a hockey game on what appears to be a monitor and some kind of home theater-esque device. So we're going to look at how to build one of these for yourself. This is just an ordinary computer, except by making a few special choices for the hardware, we can turn it into a great personal video recorder. So the most important things are going to be silence, video quality, and that's pretty much it. A home theater PC doesn't need to be particularly fast if you make good choices about the hardware. So for the CPU, we've chosen an energy efficient AMD CPU. The reason for that is less energy, less heat, less heat, less noise. For the power supply, we've gone with a Corsair power supply. They're very quiet, very reliable, and also quite cost effective. Now, for video card, the reason we chose ATI's HD2400 is because it features video decoding assistance on the GPU. So that means that if you're playing back HD content, which we'll touch on more later, it is going to be able to assist your CPU spreading the load out, spreading the heat out, more silence. Also, this particular video card is fanless, so it makes no noise at all. Now, we're going to touch on the MX Air mouse a little bit later, but that's a very unique peripheral. And in terms of the tuner card, you will need a TV tuner for any media center in order for it to work. So we've gone with a VistaView tuner card. So we started out talking about the hardware side of things, but now we're going to touch a little bit more on the software. All of that hardware is all fine and good. It's all very quiet and performs very well, but it doesn't record TV unless you have compatible software. The most common compatible software is going to be Windows Media Center, which is included with Windows Vista Home Premium, Windows XP Media Center Edition, and Windows Vista Ultimate. Windows Media Center is what you see here, and that's what we were using to replay the hockey game. It allows for TV recording, scheduled recordings, and it also has a downloadable guide from the internet so that you can view the TV listings from your area. So now that we have a good idea of what we need, both on the hardware and software side of things, Let's showcase the features of the Media Center a little bit. So basically, I'm watching the hockey game that I recorded because I was busy out with my girlfriend. Oh, it's a commercial break. All right. I don't know about you, but I don't really care about OnStar or golf, so we can just fast forward the commercials. Sure, you can do that with your VCR, but you're going to get better recording quality, you're also going to get faster recording. You get to preview as you watch so you don't miss out on anything. And also with the computer, you can store hundreds of hours of premium TV content right on your hard drive without having to worry about swapping tapes in and out. So beyond fast forwarding commercials, there's also the whole wireless control thing. As you can see, I'm using a media center remote. With this, I can basically operate anything that I need in my media center. Now the remote's all fine and good when you want to operate the media center software. However, in a Windows environment, uh, you kind of need a mouse. So let's talk about Logitech's new MX Air mouse. Check this out. I'm just going to sort of stand here a little bit. With the MX Air, you can control the pointer in the air, allowing you to easily manipulate files on the desktop in the Windows operating system whatever you need to do without ever touching it down. It works on a table, just fine, but you lift it away from the table, and all of a sudden, you're able to completely control your computer from the comfort of your house. Couch. We've tested the MX Air from as far away as about 15 feet. It works very comfortably, and it is a highly recommended add-on. In fact, our cameraman will be purchasing one once the video is over. He's so impressed by it. So that little box back there is what allows us to wirelessly control the media center with the remote. It does other things too. It allows you to schedule recordings even if you have a set-top digital box. How it does this is 
it translates the signals that you send it through the media center remote into an infrared signal that you tape a little piece onto the receiver's infrared sensor and then it translates the signal into something that the set-top box will understand. In this way, it can do something that no VCR has ever been able to do, and that is record scheduled shows. And it can record series and all kinds of neat things like that. Now, you see how I've got it tucked away. Let's talk a little bit about how to convince your spouse that it's a good idea to have a media center PC. Now, she's going to say they're ugly, they're noisy, they're big. Well, we've already covered making it quiet. You can also get a media center chassis. So I'm just going to move these things out of the way a little bit here. This would look at home in any media center. It's the LC17 from Silverstone. Also, you know, things like optical drives. You can hide those. Check this out. This chassis includes little front panels that you can put on your optical drives so that you can completely hide them from the front of the case. So now we've covered the basics of a media center. Why you want one, what it does, and how to convince your spouse that you need one. <laughs> uh, but now we're going to touch a little bit on some of the limitations of the media center. Right now, they're only capable of SD, so standard definition content. This is because the cable companies have not allowed cable card to catch on as a standard yet. They're keeping everything proprietary and encrypted. It's unfortunate, but that's the state of affairs right now. Which is not to say that you cannot still enjoy HD content on your media center. It just means that in order to view HD content, you're going to need to buy the movie, as opposed to watching it on TV. That's all. Um, now, the two competing HD standards right now are Blu-ray and HD DVD. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to make your Media Center PC ready for both Blu-ray and HD DVD. So the first thing we need to think about upgrading from our standard configuration that we already covered somewhat is instead of going with an HD 2400 series video card, you're probably going to want to go up to a 2600 series video card, especially if you're going to be wanting to do 1080p content. Uh, it's a little bit beefier in terms of the processing power without much extra noise or heat. Also, you're going to need to make sure that you have a 1080p capable display. As of right now, the lowest size monitors that are capable of 1080p are 23 inches. So you could also look at getting a 1080p LCD TV. I think they start around 32 inches. The last thing that you're going to need to look at is having an optical drive that is capable of reading HD DVD and Blu-ray. Up until now, there has been only exclusive ones. So you could buy a Blu-ray reader or an HD DVD reader. LG has recently released a very exciting new drive that burns DVDs, reads HD DVDs, and reads Blu-ray media. It's about $300 and is an incredibly exciting product for people who want to enjoy HD on their home theater PC. At this point we've basically covered everything you see here, so why is this guy still talking? Well, there's lots of stuff that is not in the picture that will definitely make the media experience more enjoyable. You're not going to want to be listening to your movies on speakers like this, so you're probably going to want to look into something like a 5.1 home theater speaker setup. In order to drive said speakers, you're probably going to need a receiver, which is also functional for switching between different inputs. Like if you had your media PC and you had a PlayStation 3 that you also wanted to use. Now another thing you don't see here that's very important is cable choices. You don't want to use your standard generic cable if you're running 25 feet of HDMI. Now, as an example, I've brought in uh, Belkin cable. This is a Belkin 6 foot HDMI cable from their Blue series. Very reasonably priced and will definitely give you that much better image quality over a generic cable. The last thing is uh, furniture choice, which I'm not really qualified to advise you on, so thank you for watching NCIS Tech Tips. My name is Linus Sebastian.